Hi, welcome to Law and Justice. I'm Jane Mulcahy. This is a special series on the topic of relationships matter. And today I'm joined by Anthony Kniff. Hi, Anthony. How are you? Hi, Jane. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. I'm very excited to have you here now, Anthony. Okay, good. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited myself, but a bit, bit nervous also, but I'll be, I'll be grand. I'll be fine. You will be grand. And a bit of nerves are entirely natural and normal. Um, I have them myself quite often. Not so much today, but can you just tell me a little bit about yourself before we get started, please? Um, I work as a youth justice worker in Galway. I've been working, I suppose, in the youth justice field um, for over 20 years. I initially started uh, in St. Joseph's Ferry House in Clonmel, which at that time, um, in the early 2000s, was um, a school of detention. Um, I worked there as a social care worker. Um, then moved back to Galway and worked in, um, initially worked in a travel youth project. And for the last, I think it's 15 years or so, I work with um, what's now known as the Youth Diversion Project. It used to be known as the Garth Youth Diversion Project. Um, so that's kind of my professional um, background. Thanks, Anthony. And so then as a youth justice worker, what is your own understanding of how our felt sense of safety and the equality of our, um, I suppose, our attachment relationship as babies kind of impacts our development and functioning and capacity to form healthy relationships as, uh, as an adult? That's a, a pretty big question. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'll, give it, I, I'll give it a go. Um, I, I'd be aware, I, I suppose, there's, there's, we'd say you, you talk about the felt sense of fa safety there, I'd be aware of the work of Peter Levine, and I'd also okay. be aware, I suppose, of um, Bowlby, um, you know, especially when it comes to, to attachment. Uh, I suppose what I'll do is I'll bring it back to maybe some of the guys I work with, and it is prominently or predominantly uh, teenage lads I work with, not, not, not so many girls. Uh, and they're likely we'd say maybe not to have secure attachment, which is the optimal. Mm -hmm. um, so they're most likely to have, I suppose, maybe disorganized, avoidant or ambivalent mm -hmm. attachment. Um, and that can lead to all sorts of problems, I suppose, later in their lives. Maybe they be the, their early years. Um, maybe they, their, their needs weren't met uh, as they should be. And I mean, that sounds maybe somewhat judgmental without me and I don't really want to, to sound judgmental, but that's, I suppose, sure. um, you know, um, a reality in, in, in many ways, unfortunately. There's multiple reasons for these sort of things. Um, so, 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 yeah, I mean, does, does that give, give an idea of... Where... Yeah, yeah, sure. And would it be something like, would youth justice workers, uh, from your knowledge and experience, generally learn a bit about attachment and how, seeing that it's relationship based practice as well, how yeah. capacity um, to form relationships can then be hindered, maybe, and the ability to trust, you know, might be hindered if people didn't have that safe, secure base? Yeah. Well, there, there's emerging. Um, the, the, we said the, the best practice unit now, and and the training, you know, it it, it definitely is. It's becoming more and more uh, part of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I started a number of years ago, um, in in we'd say in as a community youth worker, in, uh, you know, there was a kind of a big emphasis on kind of informal education. Mm -hmm. um, but there is now a greater understanding of, uh, I suppose, some of the, uh, I suppose, some of the issues that attachment or lack of attachment or poor attachment patterns raise. We say recently did some training there in um, um, uh, God, yeah, my mind has gone blank. Um, That's okay. Let me. Um, um, if you just give me a second. Yeah, I, yeah, no I, worries. I'll you, take this out. That's no problem. Um, in in um, restorative, uh, restorative practice. And there was, you know, that was a four-day training. It was one of the more con comprehensive trainings in a while. And, and there was, you know, there was certainly um, much more uh, theoretical. And, and to be fair, there was, there was also some nice um, experiential training involved. Yeah. I don't come from a social science background myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from the humanities, and um, so I wouldn't have that um, 
put in. Um, but there's also been, I suppose, maybe motivational interview training. So this that would touch on some some, mm. some of this material of you know attachment and um, there was a workshop recently in anger that I was due to attend, but I didn't. There was some, I can't remember. It was something to do with it was on Zoom and there was a problem. But I'm, I'm I anticipate that there would have been um, some information in there, maybe around attachment uh, and the implications for anger. Again, uh, there may well not be, but I'm anticipating that there would be. Um, so there are definitely, um, as the projects are uh, developing and evolving, there's more and more um, awareness being brought to staff of these, um, the importance of, of, of the early years and development. Thanks, Anthony. And youth work, including in the criminal justice sphere or setting strikes me personally as fundamentally relational and I know my colleagues in rep are also doing a piece of work on what constitutes effective relationships between youth justice workers and young people but do you agree as a practitioner that what you do is essentially relational work um yeah absolutely and um it has to be. I mean, it's it's different for different people. Um, we say as, as a youth, youth work in general, I suppose, when maybe in Ireland, it's I suppose it's a lot of it comes from a informal education. Mm -hmm. So people have to um, workers have to be able to establish, maintain a relationship with with young people that may not be, uh, I suppose, may not have. The capacity maybe to to excel in, in mainstream education so that's one side of it mm -hmm. and for me for myself i suppose i i came from my initial introduction to working with young people was in uh, school of detention so it was underpinned by a, a system called therapeutic crisis intervention okay so that system um was more um I suppose the dynamic in the original sense of the world is that you didn't sit down and 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 talk. You kind of responded appropriately to the kids where they were mm -hmm. at a time with a view to de-escalating potential crises and also uh, uh, co-regulating mm -hmm. and introducing or attempting to introduce new ways of learning. I'm sorry, I realise my dog is barking. <laughs> Well, it's very relational. He was having yeah. to chat back with you and yeah. maybe trying to co-regulate some of your yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. so uh, here I am with gritted teeth wanting him to shut up or, or to shut up. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, um, and I might have a visitor or one, one of my children at any point, so um, I, I, I understand. Uh, do you need to attend to him or check? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. She's fine. She's fine. Uh, yeah, she'd be grand. It's just that she can, she can sense the postman outside. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. And then as well from your experience as a practitioner, Anthony, does trauma, including relational trauma, so I guess we, we touched on the attachment trauma that can happen there, uh, including disorganized or ambivalent attachment, but does it feature often in the kind of backstories of children who go on to display offending behavior? And if it's a feature, a, a regular feature, do our existing services adequately address the impact of it? Um, it does, is, is, is the answer. It features uh, regularly, you know, I suppose when you look through the, the wireless CMI screening tool and case management, um, it does, you know, it, it, it's, it's ubiquitous, I suppose, to be honest with, mm. with most of these guys. Um, when I... If existing services deal with it, I suppose it, it depends how you define existing services. There's, there's a lot of good services and good practitioners out there, uh, but there's probably also, uh, you know, a, there's a lot of need and there's maybe a lot of misunderstanding, um, especially when it comes to, I suppose, what would be known maybe as as high risk or, or difficult to reach young people, mm -hmm. um, and these, uh, you know. These are the the young people who maybe are, uh, I suppose, that, that's when the the, the the presentation of trauma can be at its most acute. 
mm. you know, when there's maybe when they're withdrawing or when there's um, you know you know aggression. Um, the, the, these so so these um, there's um, I just uh, give me a second here and I'll try to think what I what I really um, want to say about this. Um, um so uh, services do they adequately impact well what i'm interested in understanding really is for example like i i'm personally very interested in how trauma can manifest in anyone's life not just in offenders but you know mm. how it can impact our ability to trust or feel safe or how we can develop physical symptoms mm. um as well as behavioral ones but there's a, a kind of a sense out there sometimes now that trauma is a buzzword and mm. uh, people are just throwing it around and it's the latest fad and it really doesn't mean anything okay Whereas, um it's, it's services as i understand it if they're going to become trauma responsive they need to understand that it's very common how yeah. it manifests how it can impact people and the importance of things like co-regulation in order to yeah. build a relationship yeah. you know so are our do our systems get that and do they understand the importance of choice and voice and peer support and and as well, I suppose, do they understand that you have to feel safe almost in your body around people before you can start to make good choices? You know, like, do we jump a bit towards the behavior control before understanding yeah. the sequence? Well, yeah, that, that's, um, I suppose, in a way, to be fair to people that may see it as a buzzword or a fad, one of the problems, I suppose, and this this applies to I suppose trauma and mental health genre. It's become almost lifestyle entertainment material. Right. It's cheap and it's interesting things to do. So it kind of maybe uh, how to put it devalues the reality. The people that you know have you know genuine immense lifelong trauma. Mm. Um, those people can be pushed to the side because maybe it's 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 too much. Mm. Um, and and you're correct. There's um there is a sort of a, a jump to the behaviour and to there's there's something I've heard quite a lot that people use the expression oh it's learned behaviour and yeah. that's fair enough I know the term mm. but that can be levelled very easily and redundant or everything else becomes redundant then um I. I Again, I, I suppose when I started, because of at the time when I started my, my career, um, there were less services, um, but there was kind of um, perhaps uh, maybe instinctively a better appreciation of how to respond to trauma with some people. Um, and uh, I suppose then over a period of time, maybe in the youth sector, maybe things maybe moved away a little um, and things like codes of behavior, mm. codes of conduct, um, locked doors, locked gates, all of that sort of stuff came in. Um, and for understandable reasons, people didn't feel safe, but it also meant, I feel um, that you know, this, this, some of the, the sort of, some of the, um, how would I put this now? Some of the, the testing that, that young people did at the door or in the car park or in the lobby of places, some of the testing of, of the adults and of the workers that they did kind of, um, you know, was, was, was gone, was diminished. So people just hopped out of the car and ran in and, there was no time for the little bit of <clears throat> um, interaction. Mm. Um, and that interaction, I think, was important because it, what it did was it, um, some of these kids that had trauma that, that maybe weren't necessarily, that didn't trust um, a lot of the adults in their lives, um, they didn't have the chance to test what, these uh, workers might be like in a sort of a very informal situation, you know, getting out of the car. Will you know? Are they, did they feel respected? Did they feel safe? Yeah. 
And by the time they, they become referred in, these people are workers um, as opposed to humans. Now, that's yeah, that's that's, that's point. I don't want anyone to feel that that's a criticism. It, it's an observation. Um, I, I feel that in any practice, in any sphere, there's ebbs and flows of, of, of practice and, and, and people for very good reasons, maybe change practice a little bit and, and maybe, but maybe every time you change, you lose a little something. But I think it's trying to find the balance, if that makes any sense. Um, we'd say, I would, we'd say years ago, and I, I don't want to be sound, I don't want this to sound as if I'm sinking into nostalgia. Uh, <laughs> But there was, there had, you know, workers had to sharpen their interpersonal skills. Yeah. Um, to deal with um, a, a load of kids that came around the corner and maybe wanted a bit of cat and mouse and maybe wanted a bit of mess. Yeah. But that was an important process, I think, because I mean, I would have worked with a few guys and there might have been a bit of cat and mouse when they were. Um, for the first couple of times, but then after a while, I'd realize, you know, you know, you just you're making a connection. Yeah, you play the game a little, and they'll see you, and you see them, and they show their hand, and or you, I show my hand, they show their hand, and chances are that they may have been referred on one or two, maybe out of the group, and then I'll say, you know, okay, you know, he's he's all right, like mm. you know, and not just me, but m most people from that. Mm that generation. Um, so I felt this, um, and, and I mean, I mean, I mean, my own, the, the team I work for myself, my own organization, um, they haven't thankfully, you know, maybe fallen into that um, way of, of being, thankfully, there's, there's still a sort of a, a greater informality. Mm. Um, when it comes to to dealing with young people and, and and the families and that, and it's you know there's an informality, but there's a professionalism at the same time. Yeah. No, I get you. Yeah. During my PhD, actually, I was interviewing some probation officers you now about mm -hmm. adult um, men involved in offending behaviour in prison and post release supervision. But one chap said that with um, the increase in risk management and risk assessment tools, the r, &R you know, and the YLS EMI is one of that suite of instruments that he kind of felt like he was a processor now and there was less time for the relationship building or less time to truly be bothered about the actual person within all the accountability. And I suppose that's the tension yeah. Is another probation officer said there was also some quite bad practice back in the day, you know, when it was all um, behind closed doors. Uh, 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 there's, there's no doubt. I know I mean, yeah. there, there is absolutely the case. Yeah. And, and, and again, I suppose I go back. It's about trying to find the balance. And, yeah. and I would, I would have been quite pessimistic three or four years ago about the direction right. of, of travel, but I'm more optimistic again. Oh, um, from from listening to people, you know, senior policymakers, uh, and that there's, there's a greater sense of optimism. Thinking maybe a, a kind of a kind of an, an acknowledgement that maybe maybe some things maybe we need to have to, to, to relook at things a little bit. Mm. So I, I can't really pinpoint stuff. It's more of a kind of um, a vibe. Yeah, I'm picking up. I, I agree with you, a tone as well, a shift yeah. in how people are speaking about young people as well, and yeah. maybe even the workers and what your role is yeah. you know, within it, and the increased focus on prevention and early intervention and no wrong door, all of that type of thing. Yeah. Um, it perhaps was said before, but um, if it feels different to someone on the ground for a fair while as well, that, that seems to be, um, you know, significant. Um, and so we were talking a little bit there about some of the training that you guys go, go through and the best practice unit. And I was actually lucky enough to do the restorative practice with some YDP workers myself and found it really interesting. Um, but do, do YDP um, workers, 
tend to get training on other things like, let's say, the brain or interpersonal neurobiology, neurodivergence, stress, trauma and survival mechanisms? Anthony, or are you um, aware? I, I, I would say a lot of these um, topics are, people will be familiar with the terms. Mm, okay. There, there will be, um, there will be, uh, I suppose, like there's no term there that I'm not familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I suppose the, 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 the depth is is something uh, that I'm you know I, I I you know maybe could be could be increased. Okay. Uh, I I think as well my own I I would be a great believer in experiential training. Mm -hmm. Um. You know I I think it's it's a it's a very different um it's a very different sort of uh, way of learning. Yeah. Uh, especially you know it's 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 um when you're dealing um with uh, with trauma, you're, you're always going to be dealing with sort of, um, I suppose, uh, unpredictable mm. behavior. Well, not, well, not always, but, but frequently. Mm. And um, reading how to respond to that in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, on a slide or from a handout or, or that is, is it, 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 you know, it's not possibly the, the best preparation. Yeah. Um, as I said, I was very fortunate to learn kind of at a cold face where you dealt with very challenging behavior mm. and um so that was was useful for me maybe i didn't have the sort of i didn't have all of the term the terminology that you used there mm. at the time but i suppose i knew which when i saw yeah. it sort of thing i knew how to respond um i'm um so you know and at the time, there would have been a lot of people going on again, talking, oh, look at all this waffle, what does it mean? And yeah. Well, th things haven't, you know, really changed that way. But um, there would be, again, some people, we'd say, I, I, I work with a great group of people and, and a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of knowledge there. People are finding their own knowledge as yeah. well. Um, and that's another thing I've noticed. I would say I would have noticed among the we'd say maybe some of these trainings now, I, I, I would have felt eight, 10, 12 years ago, maybe there was kind of a top-down approach. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is what we do. Yeah. No, you're wrong. Right. Now, no one ever said that, but there would have yeah. been. <laughs> so... uh, and, uh, but now I think people seem to have a greater, we'd say the facilitators and the trainers, you know, I suppose maybe a greater... Um, openness maybe yeah. or yeah yeah to to uh, suppose the uh, practice wisdom of people or um, wisdom practice i'm not sure what the, the correct term there is um i know what you mean yeah, yeah. what you've learned on the ground year yeah. in year out dealing with yeah. people yeah you know, one of the things that i'm very interested in as well particularly in relation to trauma is the concept um or the, the reality of traumatic reenactment, which mm. some, again, to throw more jargon in there, a repetition compulsion, but I'm sure as well, you saw this um, way back when young people would come in and try and push things and, and almost try and get a rejected yeah. response or be kicked out of the service because that's what's always happened before. Yeah. Patterns. Yes. You know, this is what, this is my territory. This is what I know. Mm. Um, and that's yeah, that's it. You know the, the you, you know, uh, and I, I mentioned the cat and mouse. Yeah, that is how that sort of uh, dynamic can be activated mm. for the young people. Uh, and that's why I suppose that's why they have to test. Mm -hmm. and, and the test generally, they expect. I suppose us. When I say us, I mean workers mm. expect us to. Uh, I suppose fail, but maybe not necessarily fail isn't the right word. Maybe sort of to to confirm their yes hypothesis. Yeah. So the the um that they're all the same. They don't yeah. care about us really. It's yeah, exactly. So the objective there is to to open the space so that they can um 
experience a different way mm. you know and 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 but also i suppose with this as well you know i don't realize i mean this is if the trauma is really deeply embedded and often it is we can't think like that this is a silver bullet uh, you know or it's going to cure all or fix all or, or change everything mm. it's it's about being realistic and and yeah you can you know you can sort of ultimately uh, i suppose help to maybe improve or, or enhance the relational ability of these people mm. um but it, if it, if it, uh, with, the, with the view really i suppose maybe the way i look at it is with a view to um I suppose creating relationships with significant people, especially in teenage years, as, as protective factors mm. coming out. Um, we'd say to um, so the, the the kind of the work we do can be kind of a um, initially a kind of a shock absorber, where right. you, you know you take some of that shock and you. Um, you know, you 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 help to sort of to to, to make I suppose the um, I suppose to facilitate new relationships with with parental figures, mm. with educators, mm. and with community people. I mean, like generally, you say sports clubs, things like that. Yeah. You know, when, when teenage guys, many of them would have been actively involved and. In, in, boxing martial arts soccer all that sort of stuff but, but uh, you know they would have they would have been maybe if when they 13 14 then they drift away yeah and and that's and the relationships become tested more and more tested and that's when they that's when they need the the, the, the help to sort of really re to help um I suppose what I put it, to, to to reimagine yes. initially how to relate to people, mm. and then to I suppose experience practice. Yeah. Um, so that's um, kind of in, in essence, I suppose that's that's kind of what we say from my perspective for to try to do. You, you. Um, I get you. Yeah. And Another thing I think um, if people don't know that trauma is so common in with the group that they're working with is maybe um, that they misunderstand empathy or even pro-social modeling, because if it's all one sided, you know, and you expect the young person to display empathy, but sometimes you're not mindful of how we're all imperfect. And we can yeah. be too busy and we can be distracted and we can relationally wound one another, whether we intend to or not. If if we don't know about how that can impact someone with low levels of trust, then they might never come back again. Yeah. And that every, inter like Karen Traceman, who I like a lot and interviewed, she has a nice phrase about every interaction can be an intervention. Yeah. Um, and that relational rupture requires relational repair. Um, do do people working uh, in the field kind of know the importance of an apology if people get things wrong? I I I, I don't know, but I do know myself, and I know myself. Um, I think yeah, some some would, some wouldn't. Mm. Um, I know myself. You mentioned their rupture and repair. How important that is. Mm. Um, and I think we'd say there is times we'd say when I was younger. Yeah. And I suppose maybe um, we, we'd say my own professional career kind of has evolved. Mm -hmm. I, I would have started, as I said, in a school of detention. So with that, the, 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 the mission statement there was to care, control and educate. Right. So the control was important. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, we'd say, times when there would have been a very... Um, how would I put this? Um, very directive approach, mm -hmm. which had its uses. Yeah. But sometimes we'd say, again, if you weren't attuned to where you are, uh, you know, and, and weren't really attuned to the, the, the young person, 
there, there could be a times when you would, um, when they would perceive it as very disrespectful. Right. Um, I, uh, you know, and, and this was, uh, this is where you can work on the rupture and, and take ownership of the fact that they felt for suspected. Mm. I, I would try not to, you know, I would say, listen, I have to take responsibility for that. Mm. You felt disrespected. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter whether or not I intended it. Meant. Yeah. So I, I had to, um, it's something I had to, and I still acknowledge with people. And if, if, mm. if I disrespected somebody um, in front of a group of people, mm. I, I would like to make that right yeah. in front of the same group of people. Mm. Um, which, are, you know, I mean, again, but that's the sort of stuff um, I would have been, that would have been modelled very well for me. Okay. Um, when I was, um, you know, as I said, I, I started off in a, a school of detention, as it was called. So there was, there was race continuum of, of, of staff, a lot of people in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Okay. And there was men and there was women. You know, there was maybe two third women, one third men. Um, maybe, maybe 60, 40, actually. Okay. Um, so you got the chance. We didn't sit down and read loads of policies and guidelines. And yeah. Um, so we, we had, you know, uh, great managers there. And the idea was that, like, you know, when you come in, you were kind of thrown into the deep end and you were given a few questions to ask yourself. But you were also, I mean, I was into, went in and I was fascinated by the dynamic and watching the people. And I was in there for a long period, maybe about four or five months, I think, before I was trained in a concept called TCI. Mm. Um, therapeutic crisis intervention. Um, I remember wanting to know more and wanting to know it all. Right. And the, I got some great advice from um, my manager at the time. And she said, listen, you're, I think I was 27 at the time. And um, so you can't copy such and such. You can't copy him. But what you can do is find pieces of everyone that you feel comfortable with as, as, as yourself. Yeah. yeah. Because when I went in for us, and it was a genuinely steep learning curve. Mm. You went in and I tried to copy maybe some other staff. Not knowing how to respond, if, 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 if how to respond, if, if what I said or did, um, backfired right okay okay so so i had to i had to suppose um weave a a method of dealing with with um the people and it was kind of underpinned by um uh four questions what's going on for me now um and that's an important one that is the most important question um and just you know it's a question that that I was encouraged to, to embody mm -hmm. that question had to be always, you know, you know, always there. The, the, then there was like, um, what is going on with the environment? Yeah. You know, so, so, so be aware of the environment, maybe indoors, outdoors, other people in the proximity, all of these things. Yeah. Uh, and the third question was what was going on for the young person. Mm -hmm. So that was again taking the time, slowing down to, I suppose, to reflect. Um, allowed, you know, maybe that that little bit of space, that little bit of composure mm -hmm. to then, then to lead on to the fourth question: what What's the best thing that can happen now to mm -hmm. to to move this forward? Or, you know what what needs to happen now so that was um and it could be sometimes what needed to happen was maybe the environment had to change maybe somebody else had to leave the room sometimes 
somebody had to take control to give certain. There could have been a, a variety of different uh, of different approaches. Um, sometimes it could be humor, very, yes. very underestimated. I don't yeah. know if there's any research done on this from a, you know, I suppose, um, especially when it comes to resilience. I think humor mm. is something that I've never seen anything really. It also can, I, I think, um, help the body maybe settle a bit, you know, if, the, yeah. if, if there's a bit of tension yeah. in the room, you know, a big explosion mm. of laughter. It's quite a yeah. bonding experience. Yeah. 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 But what I like about that whole approach that you described, there is one, the worker is first, not the young person, you know, in the sense, own yourself and what's yeah. going on for you first and foremost. Because very often, I guess, where the young person is the problem or this other person is the one with the behavior, it's mm. very easy to blame them all for it and not not see our own um, our yeah. own energy, maybe, in the, the exchange. So if we come into a room, whoever we are, like as a parent as well, if I come in highly stressed, that's going to have an impact on the energy with my child or children yeah. or husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I hear you. It's very, yeah. <laughs> I think anyone who's a parent or a partner kind yeah. of gets it. But it, we don't always, I think, maybe as professionals, um, or even in interactions with staff, fellow mm -hmm. staff members, tune in to how we are in our bodies. And energy, I think, is um, like when you were describing the environment as well, what's the energy in the room? Like, are they all going to kick off, yeah. all the young people? You can tell yeah. a lot um, yeah. by how people are holding themselves, their bodies. Like, are they all yeah. tense or yes. are people relaxed? Yes. And this is, this is, you obviously, you know, you 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 get this, um, because you know the, the fourth question there is what needs to happen now. Mm. The first thing you need to do, I, I know myself. The first thing I had to do any anyway was literally loosen my body. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, not be so tense and kind yeah. of yeah, yeah, rigid looking. Yeah, and and and. Going back to what you mentioned, I don't know, I think you quoted theorists there before about every, every the importance of every interaction. I, I, I think I know myself when I was working as, as a community worker, I was aware when I was in the proximity of where I was working, that even though I might be walking to Dunn's to get a sandwich, or I might be going across to Aldi, I had to be prepared for meeting the kids, their families, any one of that. Uh, to respond as best I could mm -hmm. so that those relationships would be enhanced. There was no point in me saying, oh, I'm on my lunch now. And that doesn't matter. I don't make that sound like I'm some sort of heroic character. <laughs> yeah. it, just, it just makes the, the, the work and the job easier and better all along. Mm -hmm. If you utilize every, um, every interaction mm -hmm. to, to, to the best you know the best you can be it, and it genuinely it might sound a, a, an ordeal but it's not it actually makes it easier yes rather than time. going i'm off the clock now sorry lad yeah. i'll talk to you yeah. in a few hours or whatever make yeah. an appointment yeah, yeah 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 um you know i think that's very very important and i mean it's something we'd say a, a lot of this stuff you know I, I spoke about the four questions there those four questions they need to be and they can be embodied mm. and you know I mean, I mean i think it's something that that it it could be worked into a sort of a, a ritual daily mm. more frequently mm. and the more you do it like anything um the nearer it is to the surface mm. um the more it's second nature, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, again, it goes. It, you know, you, you, it's, 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 it's. I suppose, in a way, there's an awful lot of. Um, I'm kind of struck by the similarities it has to sports people. Right. You know this this concept of, I suppose, visualization and awareness, um, and rehearsing and, and all of this sort of stuff. If this is if this becomes second nature, it becomes natural mm. uh, and you can respond. Like, I mean, we'd say um, 
I mentioned earlier on the, um, you know, you can you can read all you want about trauma and you can read all you want about neurodiversity, mm. but I mean the reality is quite different. Right. Uh, it's a bit like we say reading about sport. I was never a, a very good. I was never very good. I was I was useless sports person, but it was I really was interested. Whereas my brother was a good sports person. He wouldn't have read as much, but he would now. But back then he was more interested in playing. Mm. So I might have been able to. Um, tell you everything there was to know about, about sport. Okay. But the reality is I knew nothing. Right. Because he knew what it was like. To actually have to, I, do I it. to be in there mm-hmm. under pressure, you know, in a state of, to, to be in there, like, you know, the really experience, mm. experiential thing. And I think that... Um, so in the moment as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How to respond to adversity. How to... Uh, you know, so 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 yeah. I, I'm, I just there, there's, I think there's synergies here. Yeah. For the sort of work that I'm interested in in developing, you know, this mm. I suppose dynamic response in the here and now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let's talk about then the type of work that you're interested in developing, because this is really why I had you on. We had a, a long intro to this very interesting program that you devised an early morning program in Galway and it combines exercise, some kind of somatosensory techniques like mindfulness and then um, improvements, I think, as well in relational health. I think that's one of the yeah. goals. Um, yeah. That's a phrase that Bruce Perry and uh, Luddy Dobson use. I like it because it's about the nature, number and quality of the relationships that people have. So like we hear a lot about one good adult, but ideally the more positive relationships that a young person can yeah. have, the better, including with their peers and their teachers and whoever else. But how did this program come about, Anthony? Um, I suppose it came about, uh, I, 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 I'll just say a little bit about, about myself. Um, as I mentioned, um, I, uh, I, I started off um, working um, in a school of detention. I worked with a lot of guys with, with a ADHD. Um, so I would have been familiar with the concept. Would have, or, and I thought I knew a bit about it, but it wasn't until um, uh, I was in my mid thirties that I was diagnosed with ADHD myself, um, and it, it was it was probably a, a different manifestation to the kids I would have seen. Uh, there would have been commonalities. Mm. Um, I was the sort of person that was, um, you know, maybe very disorganized in school. Um, but was ultimately able to get through the hoops to get out the far side. Similar in, in college, I played to my strengths. Um, and uh, when I worked in the early part of my career, I worked in a service station and I struggled there with the administration, but I just put it down to not being interested in the job. And I, 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 was, I, I, I didn't stick with it. I left. Um, and then went back to college to do master's in sociology. And, you know, I, I managed to get through my, my degree. I was 23 or four at this stage. And I had to drop out because I wasn't able to do it because it, it um, I'm, 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 I'm spiraling into a lot of stuff. Was yeah. it the focus that was difficult? Yeah, we, we'd say when I started off, when I went to college in the early 90s, it was like you wrote a few essays and you did a few exams and you had little bibliography mm. and as I said I paid for my strength so I was able to get through um, but then I went back and everything was changed and it was like it, you know very technical and I just I couldn't do it and I didn't know what was wrong but I just put it down to oh it's not for me and I, I, I wouldn't be interested in this stuff but I had to leave uh, and that caused me a good bit of um, distress at the time I remember thinking what am I going to do with myself now so I found the job ultimately in in, um, in Clonmel. And I did that very happily for a number of years. I loved it. It was a very simple system. We had big ledgers. We wrote one entry. If there was a little incident, we wrote an entry. And if at the end of the day, we wrote an entry in big ledgers. Everyone had a big blue book, and that was it. I moved back up to Galway, worked in um, a uh, youth project on the east of the city, 
again, minimal enough administration. But then as the years went on, the administration became more and more intense. And not only administration, but also planning and, and all of this sort of stuff. For us, I was somebody that was generally sort of intuitive, instinctive, um, and responded or, or, or. to that. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so I, I got to the stage really where I, um, you know, I was, this was really bothering me. Really, I was really struggling um, very badly. And I was, you know, my, and I ended up, we'd say maybe getting a diagnosis of ADHD. Um, got some help, I suppose, with, um, you know, some professionals. And um, I, a uh, couple of the things that helped me most were, um, I suppose, exercise. I was never somebody that was really fit, so I never experienced what it was like to be fit and what that did for your body. Um, and I, I, it did help with, you know, the, the brain fog and, and, and helped with some of the focus and the concentration, but the, the, the release of the tension in your body, which I wasn't aware of the degree of tension I had in my body. Um, and, and also, um, and this is going back to like 2010, so that's about 12 years ago, um, mindfulness-based body scans. Um, so the, <clears throat> this, is, <clears throat> this has all become ubiquitous since. Back then it was, you know, really sort of, you know, behind the curtains sort of stuff, yeah. you know, especially for, I suppose, fellas like myself in my mid-30s were out trying to just act the maggot and right. all of that sort of stuff. Um, a bit new age. But, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there would have been a bit of me that would have been, you know, interested in that sort of stuff, but I wouldn't wear it on my sleeve sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so um, I took a little bit of time off work and went back and thought, you know, when I went back, I suppose I went back with new eyes and realised I would have always realized, especially in the community, um, we'd say it when I was working in, in the youth diversion program, um, there was an awful lot of post-mortems. Everything was, we were, uh, it was evening-based work a lot of the time. So guys would come in like that, a bit of cat and mouse, a bit of talking, they might come, they mightn't come. Um, and, it was like, I often noticed the, the, the fists with the, the, the you know, the, the, the busted knuckles. So that could be a conversation starter. And, and I just began to notice a pattern about confrontation in the mornings. And I really saw that, that this was a genuine pattern, not just with couple of guys but a lot of guys over the years and when I looked back so and at the time again there was you know we were going through a shift in society there was the emergence of video games and all this guys are in bed up until three four or five o'clock in the morning not able to get up you know and then the the the, the um I suppose the but the, the the understanding and the belief was oh, that they didn't want to and they wouldn't and you know yourself all that kind of crack from and this might have come from, from parents and, and from very busy professionals um, the, and maybe people as well that were retired and burnt out you know some people might have had this response um, so a lot of this got me thinking uh, sorry uh, do you mind if I just pause there for a second yeah. Are you recording now? Okay. Um, so um, I suppose I, I became aware of, 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 of the constant post-mortems um, and kind of the horse had always bolted. Um, and I, it just set me thinking about how, maybe how could this be, how could I, I suppose, maybe respond more effectively? Because I would have, you know, been involved in a good bit of mediation between schools, you know, and, and, and kids, and we'd cover the same ground, and it would be like trying to, you know, help them to relate in a different way. Um, but my sense was it was going to be difficult for them 
to do that unless maybe some of the some of the tension was removed from the bodies. Mm-hmm. And if they could do that, I felt that there was a better chance of them. Um, I, I suppose uh, creating a relationship because we'd say I, I'd noticed it happened sometimes with guys that maybe that shift from primary school into secondary school. And then a couple of years later, my, I, I went down the, the, the training centre with guys that actually were excluded from secondary school. Um, so I had read the book by a guy called John Ratey. The book was Spark. It's an old book now at this stage. But um, I, I suppose but it, that book focused on primarily was the importance of, I suppose, um, cardiovascular, consistent cardiovascular exercise on, on the brain and how it, um, how it enhances cognitive performance. So a good few of the guys I would have known maybe would have struggled. Now, all of these guys, too, we say there was about, initially I worked, I started this program off with, with five or six guys. Four or five of them would have been diagnosed with, with ADHD. Um, so, um, initially, I thought like if we could get them to do some exercise in the mornings, it would be a start. Um, so I um, I worked with one particular school um, quite a bit at the time. It was a Jesh school, and a lot of the guys would have um, come into an after school program we had had, and. Um, they would all come from the one school. So I started working more and more in that school. And I came, I became um, familiar with the, the homeschool liaison officer. And she, we just we hit it off. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I told her about this book, Spark. And I said, look, do you want to have a look at it and see what you think? And I proposed that I take the guys out first class in the morning. If I could get them to come in on time, I asked her, would would I be able to take them out first thing in the morning? She said, if you can get those guys to come in, you could do whatever you want. So <clears throat> I um, I initially got them, um, I started first getting them in for breakfast club because I realized that was an issue. Um, and it was I mean, winter. breakfast, you mean, is it? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, just, just, uh, there was a breakfast club there, but it was like, it, the guys I had now, it, it, historically, it probably would have been set up for the likes of them, but they would have been, they wouldn't have had the resources, you know, to get in. There mightn't have been the support there. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I got them in, you know, a bit of toast, a bit like that, a bit of mess and, and crack in the mm. morning, just to take the hard edge off the day. And how did you get them in? Did you collect them? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And again, that wasn't common practice at the time, but I just thought, um, remove a barrier, yeah. You know, I mean, it, to me, it, it just seemed the most sensible thing to do, you know. I mean, I so I just like I collect them at around about 20 past eight in the mornings, bring them into the breakfast club. So I did that, that was kind of nearly 10 years ago now, and 2012, the very end of 2012, very 13. So then I kind of, when I had built up, maybe did a, about a month of that, I kind of convinced them that we'd, we'd do a bit of sport in the morning. So I started off with a bit of indoor, a bit, a bit of basketball, a bit of indoor soccer. Um, again, like that, just fun. So yeah. what happened then was, you know, they would have been um, maybe arriving in previously. If they were arriving in, they were arriving in late and in bad form, and there would have been conflict with one or two um i suppose significant staff and that was not cinema and then the eventually the phone call had come home about coming in and uh, you, you know we, we spoke you spoke about trauma before but then there was intergenerational trauma this is what i'm seeing is that really um triggered parents of some of these kids because they, 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 school was not nice for them and not nice for their parents and they did not want this again so that uh, that could set the situation alight so I was thinking this is something we need to need to work on slowly so to reduce the 
I suppose, um, potential um, meetings that, that where the step where 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 parents had to come into the school to talk about the guys or the behaviour or their not their absence or other. So at, so what happened was th these guys it, first in this initial kind of like 2012 or 2013. Um, these guys got them in, got them attention fairly regularly. Um, then um, one or two of them got involved in PE. And that's when the protective factors with some of these teachers came in again. And when they got involved in a bit of PE, they started playing a little bit of, little bit of sports for the school. You know, where they had that buy-in, they had that buy-in in primary school. They, had, they, they, they went to an exceptional primary school. Um, I, I, to me, it was it was just incredible, and it was laid from the top down, and there, there was just there was, there was a warmth off the place. It was unbelievable. Um, and I, 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 what I witnessed there was a trauma sensitive approach. Again, it was just probably wasn't wasn't called that at all. Yeah, an instinctive um, one. Yeah, and um, so and, and there was a couple of guys there that were maybe teachers in their 30s and took these guys under the wing. So I wanted to try to replicate these relationships as much as I could in secondary school. So it, it did work. And, um, you know, of those guys, I, I think most of them got their junior cert or got a level level three. Um, um, so I knew there was something here because there was recognition from the school and recognition from, from home that, that the, the dynamic was changing. So that was kind of, uh, um, that was heartening like, you know? So what I wanted to do then, I wanted to introduce the Couch to 5K because I knew that like, go to all practice there, the soccer was in the morning and, and all of that, I knew that being able to run the 5K was going to be more valuable in the long run um, because it um, that would really work their heart and, and get the endorphins going and really help with the cognition um, and just you know really change I suppose their their somatic experience to borrow a phrase <laughs> uh, um, and um, so did that again there was a lot of pulling and dragging out there was a lot of dirty wet mucky pitches in, in the mornings you know um but you know we got there and there's one or two guys that, that excelled they were that was the only thing they came in for uh because and i didn't expect i i thought it was going to be pulling teeth for a lot of them but it was, there was a couple of guys there that really that really really liked it and so that meant when they increased that level of fitness they thought back to me i think you know i, I can I can get involved again in boxing because they used to like boxing and all that sort of stuff, but they fell and falling away and started messing and, and smoking and all that sort of stuff. So again, that's where the again more protective relationships were were, were um, I suppose resumed, um, and also I suppose there was that sense of. Um, the relationships were protective, but it was also the sense like that they weren't labeled as, you know, whatever you want, words you can want to use, or you can imagine there, were, there was leveled at them. People could see that there was a change. And so these guys now, you know, their backstories were, 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 not, were not good. Um, I, I also, I, I realized, so that was the first part of the use. So the first part was that I could see a little bit of progress. Change in the dynamic, guys coming in in the morning. What I wanted to do, I realized that this was a, 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 a complete departure at the time, it was to bring in the breath work, the mindfulness, or body scan. Um, so I, I, I was kind of doing this in two different places at the same time. I was doing it in, with the older guys in the training centers, and I was doing it with the younger guys still in, in, in the school. So in, in the beginning, it was carnage. But I, I realized that if I just stuck with it and told them that you're here, it doesn't matter, it's hard, it's not easy, this is really weird stuff, but that's all right, like, 
that uh, things would um, that it'd be okay. And all I all I asked them to do was was, was to give it a go, and I asked them repeatedly and stay with it. And even, even if they got up and they were messing and they were firing cushions and acting the maggot, I just stayed there, um, hoping to God that things would calm. And eventually they would calm. Um, and I remember having conversations um, about how they would relax. And then someone spoke about, you know, smoking weed and listening to a bit of Bob Marley and, and you know, different music at the time and this was again before spotify or everything wasn't at your fingertips <clears throat> so um i kind of got a bit of a notion to get um a friend of mine a colleague of mine uh, in in galway really good guy who was interested also in my friends at the time and we were complete freaks at the time we thought <laughs> uh so I, I asked him would he record some um, uh, instrumental versions of um, Bob Marley songs and maybe a few of Eminem songs and that sort of stuff. And he did. And he just, on, on the acoustic guitar, and he just hummed through it. And it was beautiful. And it, it really helped. It helped to ground the guys. And it, it sort of, you know, there, there was a safety with it. Um, and I remember at that time as well, I... Um, I, I decided as well that I, I probably need to, to, to change the script because I was using, <clears throat> I suppose the um, I was I was using more mindfulness scripts, let's say maybe that were devised by uh, Americans and were kind of very Californian and and and, and uh, the, the recordings were, you know, you, I just had a few recordings on the laptop, um, so I went to uh, another guy who I used to used to have to teach music to some of the guys I was working with when I was working in, in, in the previous youth project. And was this Northern Irish guy, he was a singer songwriter, beautiful voice, very soothing. So I asked um, I asked him if I wrote some scripts, would he record them? And he said, yeah, of course I would. So <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so he got he brought me in anyway into his lovely little how she and and we, we, we chatted away and so I, I gave him the scripts I was and he was saying I said would you read them now in the in the in, in kind of the tone you want me to read them in so uh, I did anyway and he said I'll do that for you no problem but I I honestly think that that you you should you should do it yourself and I think you should do it live so I did after that. I, I, I got rid of the recordings and I, I did it live. I um, I just um, I utilized, I suppose, maybe more accessible languages, kind of a bit more culturally appropriate, a bit more socially appropriate, a bit more, I suppose, teenage lad centric, you know, a bit more mechanical. <laughs> um, okay. You know, just so that it was like, you know, I don't know if you'd call it mindfulness or what you'd call it, but it was getting them to sort of visualize the breath moving down to their body and moving through the joints and, you know, moving through all the bones and the tissue and all of that, but in very, I suppose, simple, calm, plain language, not too much chakra talk. Uh, <laughs> It's interesting that your friend um, encouraged you to do the, the thing yourself, you know, because yeah. you do have a nice voice as well. It's kind of deep and calm. And yeah, I, I get why he's, he recommended that. Yeah, but I, I and I, I've heard myself since now. And, you know, I think, yeah, you know what? He was right. But I wouldn't in a million years have thought that. Um, because all, all I thought was like just mumbly, stuttery, stammery. Um, and so, and I suppose maybe it has improved a bit since then because of that bit of validation from him. Um, I like that, again, when I went into it and doing it, you, instead of listening to it live, I suppose it's a bit like it was a performance, 
as well. You know, I, 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 I maybe I knew where and what I need, what needed to happen. If I sensed um, discomfort, if I sensed uh, anxiety or, or excitement or anything, I, I could tweak and change things and, and acknowledge that this was difficult stuff, but get them to, to change, change focus maybe. Uh, so that was a, it was a great intervention that time from, from um, Paddy, music teacher. Um, and it worked really well. So that was kind of, it took a good bit of going. And, and at the time, the, 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 that, that, that woman I was telling you about, she became the principal of that particular secondary school. And um, so then I went to her again. Um, and she had, uh, she opened up, it was an old car, choral area or choir area upstairs in the church in the school. And she turned it into a meditation room. And this is like 2013. Long time ago, and I think everyone th in the school called, thought she was mad. Um, but she said, "Look what I have!" I said, "Oh my God, this place is unreal." And um, so, basically, for the first year, I think we were about the only ones that used it first thing in the morning. But um, she, I suppose, she, she worked in Northern Ireland during the Troubles in the 1980s, and um, she spoke about. Um, on Friday afternoons, again, this was her talking about her um, awareness of the importance of the continuum of, of, of care. She spoke about maybe witnessing older people, older teachers becoming aware of, now we need to downregulate these kids. So that she would, instead of like, it wasn't meditation or anything like that at the time, it was just getting them to put their hands in their heads and she put on um, classical music, like she said, she'd often put on Passion Bells Canon. Mm. that sort of stuff and it, I, I don't know if you know this thing but you, it, it instantly whatever sort of resonance is in there it, it, it really helps to downregulate. so it was the opposite of, of us they were bringing them down to the weekend yeah. Yeah. whereas our idea is to you know but again she was talking so regulate yeah, yeah so, she, so she was um so that was great. Uh, and did she know that word in 2013, down regulation? I'm just uh, Probably not. And I don't think I knew it myself either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, we know what it, I mean. We know yeah. what it means by other yeah. terms yeah. like calm or, or yeah. 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 Or, or, or Relax soon. people. Yeah. 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 I suppose I probably would have been a regular, because I was familiar with the concept of core regulation, I probably would have. Again, I, 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 wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be the best for jargon. Um, I would understand, I get the gist of things, but I probably be maybe a bit, um, if I get the gist of something, going into the minutiae can be very difficult for me. Yeah. Well, jargon uh, can be very alienating as well. I think no one should ever use a term without explaining it to people because, yeah. you know, they might know the phenomenon by a different word and you just make them go, oh, I'm stupid or I don't get this, whereas yeah. they really might actually get it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, sorry for interrupting yeah. me, Anthony. I, I suppose, I, I, so ultimately what I wanted to do was integrate all three. And then the TCI to, to, to co-regulate, the, um, the exercise to, to, to enhance the cognitive performance, to help with the, I suppose, like the somatic and the emotional, uh, the, the meditation, uh, or the mindfulness, whatever you want to call it, again, to help to, to downregulate. And also, the big part of the jigsaw I wanted to do was introduce yoga, because, I, again, it was something I found useful. Um, I had tried it a couple of times, but it didn't work out. There just wasn't the right cultural fit. So I, um, I spoke to my boss at the time. He's still my boss. And I was kind of trying to explain what I was doing. So he suggested um, martial arts. He's a martial artist himself and um i thought like okay sound i'll give it a go I, you know uh, and um but i went the first time i went oh, this is it this is the stealth way of getting this stuff in that sort of deep stretching mm. you know the utilization of the breath you know that sort of working on the proprioceptive mm -hmm. system to help, you know, uh, you know, especially with your divergent kids, to to 
to, to just help, you know, with the pushing, pulling, yeah. um, the stretching. Now, speaking of jargon there, proprioceptive mm. system, I, I have a, a bit of an idea what that is myself, but it's the it's to do with the internal world, isn't it? And the muscles yeah. and yeah. our senses. Is, is that broken? Yeah, I, I suppose it's about, I suppose, again, I'm, I used it, but I, I to, to define it as difficult. And it, it, it probably isn't for somebody that's, that's, you know, a born teacher, but for me, it's to define it as difficult. Something about the how we um how our body perceives space and movement now that could be completely wrong and i'm completely open to correction but what it i do know is for me it works for me because yeah. that's layman's terms yeah. like our bodies are in space and yeah. some people are are hyper vigilant other people are slow to wake up so that, yeah. that that's useful um uh, basic uh, idea i think for the the viewers as well about what what you kind of mean by but what I do know, and what the guys found out is that it is so, as one guy said, it's just beautiful. If you were, we'd say, guys hanging off the chin-up bar or, or doing heavy press-ups and what that does to your body, you know, if you have that level of somatic distress or tension, and that's relieved, that you can actually, as, as he said, say, feel normal. It, it, was, it was lovely. So I realized we're, we're probably, I, I didn't even move into the main piece of this. Yes, um, I'm kind of. You're running out a bit of time, I know. Um, but I suppose, like, what is the, what was the overall objective for you with this? The overall objective was, I, I suppose the overall objective was, was, was to, to get these guys to 18 um, with a sort of a, a, an opportunity that have they would have the opportunity to, 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 to have had an education not I, I wasn't bothered about the academic side but what I what I, what I, what I, what I was concerned about was that they would they would have you know, they would have structure in their lives. They would have um, positive habits. They would have have um, um, positive relationships. They would have protective relationships. They would have, um, you know, in their community, they would not be seen as, you know, a bad element or you know whatever you want term you want to use you know so 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 that that was it um you, you know uh, i also felt that if, if they could have all of these things if you know if there was emerging difficulties that they could be addressed by other professionals a lot of the guys we would have been with might have had been with mental health services or they might have been with addiction services but it wasn't for them you know, especially when we started working with the 16, 17, 18 year olds. And it wasn't for them because maybe they were coming at it, we'd say the practitioners might have been coming at it from a cognitive perspective. And um, that wasn't for the guys because it's very hard to, to relate to someone to their head if their body's on fire or if the body's frozen or if, if they're just, you know, so I, I, I kind of realized that that needed to be worked through first before they could sit and work with these people. Uh, and, and and learn to trust yeah to trust people um i i suppose in about 2015 2016 then I, um i tried to get a martial arts guy to 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 help out but that didn't work out unfortunately um so um i explained a new colleague started with me and, and a new colleague from across the city was also there and i tried to explain my concept that was constantly evolving and he was um, an exceptional sportsman and he said we can we can do um, this thing called Tabata in the morning Tabata is a it's a form of um, I suppose um, high intensity interval training that's based on body weight so we didn't need any equipment 
all we need. So it was it was like if a, if a, if a, if if um, an occupational therapist came in and saw, us, oh my god, this is this is everything you want these kids to do. It's it's pushing, it's pulling, it's stretching. Wow, cool. It's intense cardio. It's all of these things. So um, that worked really well. So there was was three of us involved: um, Rory Leddy and Nick Linan two you know exceptional guys you know we were all very different but we gelled very very well um because if if it had been left where i had was with you know trying to do couch to 5ks and 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 and, uh, you know it needed more it needed more to bring in the guys that really wanted and needed more so those two guys came in and brought it to a new level um so our numbers increased and we were working then with high risk guys. You know, these guys were all in the twenties in, in, in and out of school. Uh, out of um and, and, and even struggling to stay in the training centers. These guys now were the most at risk guys in the training centers. So um I initially liked the idea of the whole, you know, very therapeutic and all of that. Then I realized, you know, again trying to sort of learn a bit from different places, but, but these guys relished the competitive element, the camaraderie, you know, all of these things. Uh, and, you know, they, they, they really responded very well to that. Now, again, in the early days, there was an awful lot of, because some of these guys had never effect, worked effectively in a group. They would have been, some of them would have been taken out of primary school. So getting them to integrate into a group in the early days was difficult. So that's where TCI came into its own. So there was guys there, Whereas maybe the other guys would have focused on, on different elements. I initially would have worked very much through TCI, helping especially some of the more, um, uh, some of the guys that found it more difficult to stay stay with it, you know. There's that, sorry, um, Anthony, there's a phrase that, um... I love from Bruce Perry that really springs to mind with your approach as well, this kind of regulate, relate reason. And so just there, as you described the regulation with the the fellas who needed it more, you know, the chatting, the tuning into where they were in their bodies and the tension and all of that, that made them then able to relate to you or to be in the group with the others, you know, Um, and if they were in school, maybe to relate with the teacher and not tell them to F off or whatever. They looked at them. That's exactly, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And then the cognitive, this is where I think risk management falls down is thinking we can speak to people about their behavior and their choices and that they'll listen and be able Mm -hmm. to apply it and be in the cortex. If their body, as you say, is on fire, that's a lovely way of putting it. And they may not even know. Yeah. 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 I I know. I mean, I have great respect for um, existential philosophy and existential psychotherapy. Uh, and, and this concept of we always have a choice. Um, but the choices these guys made had were very, very limited. So, so they made the best choices they had. And we, we, I suppose we tried to open the space for them to make better choices. Um, and that was, you know, by, by, by reducing the, 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 I suppose, redu- reducing the, the temperature of that, you know, that stress inside the body, eliminating it. You mentioned we say when you have seven or eight kids that are high need, high risk, high need in a, in a group, the energy in there was lively. But we we worked with it slowly and 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 and, and patiently, you know, as as we could, and and it it worked, it, you know, it worked really really well. Um, and you had a lovely video that you produced. Yeah. Um, and I know you need to go, but what one of the things that struck me um, that was so interesting was one of the boys at the end was talking about the brain and resilience and, 
it was like he had learned something. His cortex had been opened and he was able to articulate himself in a way that perhaps he mightn't have been. Now, I don't know the boy at yeah, all. No, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. But if you're a highly stressed adult or child or young person, your, your language centers of the brain go offline as well. You can't say anything. You can't process the information. So again, this, this kind of focus on the body first and, and, yeah. and eliminate some of the tension. Yeah. Um, to get to the mind, to get to yeah. the capacity to make yeah. better choices. Yeah, exactly. The idea was we try to try, 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 try. Yeah, that, that that's it. You 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 get you get where this is 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 coming from, and you get where it's going to, and that is it is again. I suppose I didn't get a chance to go into a lot of this. So we we'd say, and this is where the the, the relational. It was to open the space for the relationship and uh, to think so that they could respond instead of react. You know, and, the, and then historically the reactions were the hitting the wall or, 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 or you know, the door or, uh, you know, or... A mouthful of abuse maybe. Yeah, or, or, or you know, storming out, whereas we could maybe reduce that and instead of storming out, it was like, you know, a nice individual crisis management plan would say, listen, this is a pre-planned. Mm. If, if they're doing this to um, preserve their placement. Yeah. Whereas, you know, but as as the years went on, there was less and less that needed because it kind of, it, there, there, there was a culture there that, um, that built over the time and there was less need for TCI mm. because guys just got up, went into the gym, do the thing, went into class uh, and it worked pretty well. And, and then, you know, as time evolved and, and that it it um it just there was a few changes, there was a few more people that um came in. There was time we'd say there was at times we had six or seven or eight guys and there was three adult males. We realized maybe we need some female energy in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because yeah, and especially different as energy. Guy, yeah. You, you know, as the, you know, so then we had, you know, really exceptional female colleagues, um, Anjana Levy and Vicky Reynolds, and we had Kira Morton, GLO, Garda, like mm -hmm. unbelievable commitment to the program. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, again, another part of it, that, that these guys, the, the relationship with the guards yeah. was, was... Transformed, potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had a few, unfortunately, COVID came just at the wrong time. We had, we had just started bringing in um, trainee guards to the program. Brilliant. Uh, and they'd just get in, they just, one, got, one guard already, they, one of the lads looked at him and said, oh, he's a guard, but he's sound. Whereas another, <laughs> <laughs> whereas another guard, they didn't, yeah. they didn't have a clue. And he didn't say anything. And they, he, yeah. they just, because, you know, it got to the stage, like, you know, it used to get busy enough. It was rush, it was, it's kind of rushed in the morning. It would be nice to have more time, but. As the traffic in Galway, we started off in 2012 and 13, the traffic wasn't too bad, but then, I don't know if you know right. anything about Galway, the traffic got worse and we had less time to do it. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. But we had exceptional support and collaboration with the, the training centres, um, U3 Stokes of Anoiga, the community training centre, um, and on all their staff brought in to, Fantastic. to, to um, training in TCI also. Mm um and, and realizing this was this was important brilliant um, it, it it kind of ceased just around covid time sure it, you know um but um yeah so there's 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 a bit more in there yeah to to to, to, to kind of explain if it's well, yeah. we, we can maybe um, schedule a, another chat another time because I yeah, 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 you need yeah. to go now, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a very final one. And um, just just what occurs to you, um, what can policymakers do, do you think? To, um, to, to... What policymakers can do is, I mean, the, the word relationship comes up a lot and the word trauma comes up a lot. And, and what policymakers, I suppose, as I said, I'm tw over 20 years working in this field. And in that time, I've seen a kind of 
you know, um, maybe a sort of a more prescriptive version of how to relate. Whereas I think maybe that some of the maybe intrinsically strong people that are able to relate to these guys maybe aren't in the industry now. Right. I, I think they there needs to be a, a way of 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 of, of 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 sort of marrying, you know, um, systematic approach with sort of people that are intrinsically built to relate to these guys. Um, I think that would be important. Um, it's possible. I think I believe it is. Um, I, I'm because I know there's. We'd say my. I think, and I think it, there needs to be there, there's. A lot of the work that would be the, the policymakers and academics and, and senior management they want to build it around young people, but they also need to realize that the service providers or the adults or workers they're also a massive part of it. So it needs to be built around them also. So we'd say an awful lot of the people that are outstanding relationalists, for want of a better word, they may not be strong administrators. They may not be strong on these areas, that doesn't mean that there can't be um, that these two things can't sort of coexist. I just think that this will policy policymakers need to figure out with these people what works, what would work so that we can um, have good, solid, secure boundaries, good systems. But it will not, I uh, suppose, inhibit relationships. It will not, and it's. I think what's very important is, as I said, when I started, I had people to to watch to sort of so I could weave a way of working. If you have, and at that time I was in my twenties, I could look at people in my in their twenties, in their thirties, the forties, fifties, and sixties. If if you're, there needs to be a continuum of of, of practice and of, of the art and craft of of, of relationships. Um, and reading guidelines is important and it's necessary, but there needs to be that sort of um, really experiential way of saying, you know, I, I like the way you did that, how do you do that, and, and what do you do that, and generally, you know, a, a wise old um, practitioner will um, say, well, what do you think? They'll, they'll put it back onto the onto the person and tell them instead of telling them well if you go and look this up this guidelines here you know they'll get them to they'll be able to draw it out of people like it was drawn out of me twenty or over twenty years ago. I think I think that's important. I think and I know that I, I do believe that there's the tide is maybe beginning to turn back towards um, uh, valuing that sort of thing. And I, I, I do think, and I, I remember earlier on, I mentioned humour. I think that there needs to be a bit more consideration given to humour when it comes to the its value and resilience. If you look at, uh, this is, hopefully it's not too stereotypical, but if you look at the Jewish communities and the Irish communities, an awful lot of adversity for a long, long, long time. But, you know, being good with words, being good with humour, massive um, survive yeah it does you know you know yeah. i think i think i think that that and thrive yeah in, in, yeah. in ways yeah yeah absolutely uh, you know and, and we say these the, the young guys we work with their initial way of engaging sometimes is, is actually messing acting having the crack and that that's their safe area that's the kind of the open door and if you stay there for a little while and then you get a bit more in but if you go in straight away and you start talking about Let's yeah. look at your offending behavior and yeah, your. Uh, you know, and I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, you, 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 that has to be addressed. Mm. But you don't want to, to you know, you know, the, you know, you know, the concept of the, the closed door and the trap door. Mm. You, you know, you need to be, uh, or the open door, you, you need to be, you need to Sadly. be aware of these things, mm. you know. So I, I think that's, that's important also. Thank you, Anthony. Oh, thank look, you. Um, we've had a grand long chat here and you better go wherever you need to be. So um, 
thanks so much for joining me for this chat about relationships matter um uh, my my guest today was anthony kniff and i wish you well with all the uh, important work that you're doing